What's up guys, JP back at you once again bringing you guys another review. Today I am reviewing VHS Massacre, Cult Films, and the rise and fall of physical media. This is a film that hit the festival circuits in 2015 and got its official Blu-ray release in 2017. It should be coming out very soon. This is a documentary film that follows a couple of filmmakers and radio personalities that decided to document the rise of home media and the decline of physical media in which is partly due to the introduction of streaming. They spent a lot of time talking about video stores, pirating, streaming, the effects of independent filmmakers in the current landscape of how we intake films. They conduct interviews throughout the documentary with actors and actresses such as Debbie Rochon, drive-in personality and film critic Joe Bob Briggs who used to host Monster Vision back in the day, Lloyd Kaufman who is the owner and founder of Troma Entertainment, as well as a whole slew of other actors and actresses, filmmakers, and just people that are involved in the industry. From my understanding, this film was shot over a two-year period beginning in 2012 and got its official release in 2015 and now making its official Blu-ray release in 2017. This film touches on a lot of things. They begin with talking about VHS itself. Then they talk about the introduction of DVD and how that hurt stores that were the mom and pop VHS stores and the eventual decline of Blockbuster and uh, Hollywood Video and their relationships with movie studios that kind of phased out the mom and pop shops because because they were able to have these massive amounts of copies of big release films when mom and pop shops could really only afford one because these uh, big chains had relationships with movie studios that let them get those films at a very cheaper price. They talk about pirating and how it affects independent filmmakers who were able to make these films, put them on VHS, sell them to video stores, and get a return on their investment now are you know, losing money and not able to make a film and not be able to gain any money from the film that they make on an independent level. They talk about the introduction of streaming and how it is actually helping uh, with piracy because people can monetize these streams on YouTube or Vimeo or any place where you can stream films. You can monetize them with ads so these independent filmmakers are kind of finding a way now to receive money back after they uh, produce and, and release these films. This is a very cool documentary. I will say that it does feel a little amateurish. There's a lot of things in the film that are just barely scratching the surface of the overall picture. It only runs an hour and 14 minutes, which just flies by, and they tackle a lot of topics, and they don't get to spend that much time on the topics because it is such a short documentary, and honestly, it probably has to do with budget constraints. It, it, this feels like a film that was made on no money at all, and it's really cool to see uh, a couple of you know young filmmakers make an independent documentary that actually is very interesting and does touch on a lot of relevant topics to today's uh, industry in film. I just sort of wish that for a title called VHS Massacre, it might have focused a little bit more on that aspect of the documentary, which is you know the VHS boom and filmmakers like Lloyd Kaufman and Charles Band uh, and how they would uh, you know thrive in the video market and maybe talk to mom and pop shop owners who uh, you know had a had a crazy uh, big business back in the you know 80s and 90s and and how it dried up they do scratch the surface on these things but they don't get to spend that much time on them because they kind of hop around to different topics such as pirating and such as streaming when I feel like the core of this documentary should have been about that boom and fall they really kind of get outside of that a little bit and they don't really talk about VHS a whole lot for a title called VHS Massacre you might expect them to talk about it a little bit more seems like they really were trying to fit everything into this short documentary and I think the documentary would have been a little bit better had they spent more time on certain aspects and less time on some of the newer aspects and some of the you know decline they, they still needed to talk about the decline but uh, I just feel like the rise was a, was a more interesting story because it was further away from what's happening now that the decline is still 
still happening, you know, and, you know, when you're talking about physical media, the decline is we're still in the middle of the decline right now. So I would have liked to focus more on the rise and less on the decline. But still, I think that it's interesting what they talked about. You could really make a couple more volumes of VHS Massacre because there's plenty more story to tell. I absolutely love that they got Joe Bob Briggs. He was by far the most interesting part of this documentary. The man needs his own TV show. He needs his own, uh, you know, horror hosting show. He needs it on... Shutter or Netflix or some uh, movie uh, subscription service, uh, streaming service, because the guy can talk so well. I used to watch Monster Vision back in the 90s. I absolutely loved it. I watched it until it ended. I saw the final episode. It just ended out of nowhere. It's what made me a horror fan, part partly because Monster Vision would be on every Saturday night, and I loved it so much. And I was just obsessed with it. Joe Bob Briggs talks and you just listen he is so interesting towards the end of the documentary he talks about um, all these different eras of film you know the 1914 or was it 1922 or, or 1930 when this happened or 1940 when this happened and it felt like he could have just went on and on and you just want to hear him talk he definitely added a great part to this film and I think that it really ele elevated this film uh, to, to the next level because like I said it does feel very amateurish and I don't say that in a mean way I just say that in a way where it's it's on a shoestring budget uh, it feels like there was um, you know basic editing software uh, it doesn't feel like they really you know had a, a ton of money and a ton of, ton of expertise on how to put together a documentary but they still made something very cool for the fans and I actually really really liked it I probably give it a 6.5 out of 10 I highly recommend checking it out it's a really cool flick um, and I gotta say guys it, it's it's worth a watch